Welcome to Parkside. We are so glad you are with us this morning. Would you take a moment and go to parksidechurch.cc slash Sunday and fill out a community card to let us know you are here and fill out a prayer request. And if you would like to give, you can go to online, go online at parksidechurch.cc slash give through Venmo or at My Parkside Church. Today we are in week six of our series called Spirit of God, and we have Wayne teaching today. Hey Parkside, we are in a year-long theme called God, and we're talking about the Spirit of God. And here's just a truth that I think is huge, is that oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes, breakthroughs come in the rhythm of the ordinary. Meaning, really exciting things happen, but they come because we've been we've been doing something repeatedly that didn't seem that exciting. Like my son this last week found out that, hey, he for the second year in a row is in the uh, million word club at his school. Uh, but it just kind of happened, whoa! But it's because, hey, he gets home from school every day and, and reads for a while. Or for me, when I was uh, running competitively, um, you know, I'd have a breakthrough meet, but you look at it and go, really, it's because, man, every day I was working out and having good workouts before, right? It's in the, in the rhythm. And so the same thing is true we think about even like last week, Brooke shared and talked about God speaking to you through, you know, the word in your mind and through visions and through dreams. And maybe some of you are like, well, shoot, I want that to happen to me. And the reality is, is as we have the rhythm of spending time with God in his word, in prayer, hey, God shows up in really cool ways. And one of the ways that the Holy Spirit works is he works by, he gives you spiritual gifts. In fact, we read about that the moment that you receive Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior, you repent and believe, hey, that we're promised the Holy Spirit comes in and he gifts you specifically in ways to do ministry for Jesus. And he's done it uniquely for you. And that's what we're going to talk about for the next two weeks. This is Ephesians chapter four, and it says in verse 11, so Christ himself, that's cool, Christ himself gave this, uh, gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach the unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Uh, he says, apostles, uh, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers. There's a lot more gifts than that, but, but many believe that all the other gifts kind of fall under those. And none of us have all these gifts except Jesus. Jesus had all of them, but when we all come together and, uh, and we live these out in our own ways, that then we actually get an image of Christ. So the closest you're ever going to see to Jesus walking around he has a really healthy church that's using all the gifts. So here's what we're going to do today is we are going to talk about uh, apostles, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers, and some gifts that come underneath those found in Romans chapter 12. And then next week, we're going to look at the prophetic gifts, some of the ones that a lot of times you go, well, what does that look like? Uh, th those are found mostly in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And so today, a good friend of mine and yours, Wayne Twadell, is going to walk us through Romans 12. And I believe if we get what he's talking about uh, and, and apply it to our lives, remember obedience is the whole deal, um, it can be massive for you and massive for our church. And let me say this too. Some of you might go, I've heard this before. But my guess is there's a lot of stuff that have happened in this COVID season that have kicked you out of uh, stuff you were doing before and you know it, but you're not living it anymore. Let this be the real in of like, hey, it's time to start using those gifts again. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome Wayne Twaddell. Hey Parkside, I am so excited uh, to be the one to bring you the message again this week. For those of you who don't know, my name is Wayne and this week we're going to be talking about spiritual gifts. And these are the gifts that God has given each and every single one of us. And just like God chose us specifically, he also chose for us specific gifts. And this can be a very fun topic, fun and exciting topic, uh, because it gives us an opportunity to learn something new about ourselves. Paul 5 tells us, and I'm paraphrasing, that we are all part of one body and that we all belong to each other. And I think a great example of this can be found in a squad of firefighters. When we consider the individual tasks that each firefighter might perform when they show up to a scene, a fire, they have to put it out. Somebody has to pull the hose out of the truck. Uh, someone has to turn the water on. Someone has to, well, first someone has to attach it to a fire hydrant, right? And someone's got to hold the hose and you might need a whole team of people behind you 
uh, to hold the hose, to spray on the fire. And if you consider yourself uh, in a firefighter squad and you consider the task that you might perform, and then later I were to ask you what your job was, you know, you might say, well, I'm the one who uh, attached the hose to the fire hydrant, or I'm the one who who held the hose and sprayed sprayed uh, the water on the fire. Or you might even say, you know, I'm the fire chief. I'm the one who stands there and tells everybody else what to do. But regardless of which task you perform, your job essentially is a firefighter. That's your job. You're a firefighter. Just like each individual firefighter has a role to play, so do we. Uh, our roles are extremely important, in fact. There aren't any minor parts. Romans 12, starting at verse 1, says, uh, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good pleasing and perfect will. That was Romans 12 verses 1 and 2 and I don't know about you but every time I read that I get a little freaked out about the living sacrifice part and if earlier in the series you remember from from John 15 uh, we talked about how we are branches that are on the vine that is Jesus and God is the gardener and he's going to prune and now we've got this bit about being a living sacrifice, and it's like, ah, what am I giving up? When I think of sacrifice, uh, I sometimes think of, you know, what do I have to give up? I mean, what if it's something I really, really want? Do I still have to give it up? And I want to urge you, don't panic. Don't worry. Remember that God is good. And what he's asking us to do is to give, give of ourselves, give of our spiritual gifts that he has given us. And only when we start thinking of sacrifice as giving, as the giving of our spiritual gifts, can our mind truly be renewed. Uh, this is our true and proper worship. And in it, we can see that God's will is good. It's perfect. It is pleasing. Spiritual gifts are good. Spiritual gifts are great. Uh, I'm in. Uh, so what are these spiritual gifts? And more specifically, uh, which ones belong to me? Let's read on in Romans chapter 12, uh, starting at verse 3. And then we'll jump over to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verses 4 through 7. So Romans chapter 12, verse 3. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others." We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. So that was Romans 12, verses 3 through 8. Let's jump over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verses 4 through 7. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and, and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. So in all that scripture, uh, it never specifically says what your specific gift is, right? It doesn't say in the scripture, uh, Wayne Twaddell from Vista, California, his spiritual gift is going to be prophecy or teaching or ministry, right? It doesn't say that, you know, Cindy from Oceanside, her, her gift is, is going to be discipleship. It doesn't specifically say your name and exactly what your gift is. So now that we've read this scripture, we 
we learned something about these spiritual gifts, uh, but maybe you're just still feeling like, man, I, I just don't know what mine is and what can I do about it? Well, there, there are some ways to identify your spiritual gift. Uh, and we're going to, we're going to go through those, uh, or some of those ways anyways. Um, first thing, you know, uh, you have to ask yourself is, you know, what, what needs do I see out there? You know, do you, do you see specific needs? And it's possible that those needs you see are directly tied to your spiritual gift. And if you can make that relation, uh, your gift might be identified. Um, ask people who are connected to you spiritually, right? So those who best know you uh, will probably be able to help you identify what your spiritual gift is. In fact, it may not even require much thought, depending how well they know you, how long they have known you. Uh, they might just be able to instantly say, oh, yeah, it's this, you're that, uh, which could be very uh, helpful. Um, look at the list of spiritual gifts and the, the gifts that were identified in these scriptures uh, are not an exhaustive list, right? There are many more spiritual gifts. Um, so compile a list of these spiritual gifts and pour through them and see what jumps out at you. It may or may not be your gift, but it's certainly going to help you uh, identify it. Uh, you can also try trial and error, right? So see, hey, am I, am I a good servant? Um, well, certainly all of these gifts require service, right? Um, I myself know that, you know, uh, one of my spiritual gifts is being a servant. And that's great. I'm, I'm completely satisfied with it. Um, and you can pray. You can pray for these gifts to be revealed. Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 11, starting at verse 10, for everyone who asks receives. For the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you ask the Father for your spiritual gift or gifts to be revealed, they will be. Now, regardless of your spiritual gift, uh, know that it will bring you joy. Don't be discouraged if you feel like your gift isn't that great because it because it is all of these gifts have a very important part not one of them is better than the other remember we are part of the same body right if if your gift is encouragement and you feel like oh man like it's that's good but I, it's not as good as prophecy i wish i was a prophet prophecy is a is a spectacular gift and you know what i wish it was mine well, you know, being an encourager is a phenomenally important job. Let's let's reconsider our firefighter squad for a moment. You know, the fire chief will at times have to give words of encouragement to the squad, right? It's a difficult job. And sometimes those firefighters, they're going to be down. And when that chief gives, gives words of encouragement, it's not just a check in the box, right? Oh, uh, you're feeling down. Here are, Here's a word of encouragement. No, those encouraging words had better be effective because people's lives are at stake. If that firefighting chief doesn't say the right thing and encourage those firefighters, they may not be able to do their job very well. And that's bad for the rest of us. Now, you may also be thinking that, man, my, my spiritual gift, maybe you're thinking it's kind of weak, right? Or, you know, it's just underdeveloped and I need to wait until it's stronger. I need to wait until I'm better at it. Uh, to use it. And I just, I want to encourage you to go out and use your gifts as they are, and they will become stronger, right? The, the world needs you. I know you identify needs in the world around you, and the body needs you, right? We're all connected to the same body, and the world is ready for you. It's ready for you to use your gifts, and God so much wants to use you. Also, remember, that these gifts will bring you joy. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. You know, uh, <laughs> there's an old song, you know, don't hide it under a bush, right? This little light of mine. Uh, don't hide your light under a bush. Use your gift. 1 Corinthians 12, 15, Paul writes, Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. Right. If you don't 
like your spiritual gift if, or if you don't think it's good enough or it's you know not as good as someone else's it's still part of the body it's the same body and we need every bit of it and we need you and we need your spiritual gift parkside thanks for staying with me in this lesson if uh, you know, you want to do more reading in the scripture about spiritual gifts. I read from Romans chapter 12 and 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, I encourage you to read that on your own uh, and just continue to study God's word. Continue to develop your own spiritual gifts and help others identify their spiritual gifts, especially if you are asked. Also, don't forget to pray about it, right? God will reveal your gifts to you. And, you know, for all of our sakes, please, please develop your spiritual gifts. Please use them. And now I just want to part with you this one last scripture. First Peter 4, starting at verse 10, tells us, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Happy Sunday, friends. Let's sing some songs to our Lord and Savior. Oh, I was buried beneath who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing, but.
thank you, Lord. We're so grateful um, that you've rescued us from death, Jesus, and so grateful that you've risen from the grave. And because of that, Lord, uh, we will also rise from the grave because uh, we've put our faith and our trust and, and our devotion towards you, Jesus. We love you and just thank you so much for loving us in return. You're so good to us, Jesus. All things are possible Oh, when we believe, all chains are breakable. Oh, when we receive in Yahweh, you keep your promises. If you said it, we believe it. If you said it, if you said it, we believe it.
singing you this song I'm waiting at the cross And all the world holds dear I count it all as loss For the sake of knowing you For the glory of your name To know the lasting joy Even sharing in your Nothing like living with you This life you create 